okay so um, we learned three normalization uh, yes i already started uh, so uh, we already uh, seen three steps of normalization first normal form second normal form and third normal form okay so i just i will go uh, fastly uh, what is first normal form second normal form and third normal form uh so uh, first normal form each column should contain uh, single values so sometimes in the in the exam uh, they will not give you the relation uh, as it is or they will not give you the table uh, what they will give uh, the relations the name of the relation like uh, here you can see uh, appointments patient id doctor id patient name doctor name hospital id and so on so actually here they didn't uh, given the table so in that case how we can know that the values are single values each column contain single values we have no idea but if they give a, a primary key like this here you can see the columns are underlined which means that it is the primary key so if there is a primary key then uh, the values of that column should be unique and uh, the values uh, will be single values okay so we can make sure that that uh, relation is in first normal form okay so this is just uh, a clue that how we can make sure that the table is in first normal form if there is a primary key then we can make sure that uh the the the, the relation is in first normal form okay and uh, if they given the table check each column if all, all the column contain single value and if uh, any one column contain unique value then we can choose that column as the primary key and we can make sure that the table is in first normal form okay so this is the condition uh, for a relation to be in first normal form uh, if there is a primary key Uh, then it is in first normal form okay and now uh, let's see uh, what is the criteria uh, to be satisfied for the second normal form so for the second normal form uh, we need to make sure that there are no partial dependencies between the primary key and the non primary key okay uh, so we already learned this so first of all you have to learn what is meant by functional dependency functional dependency means that if there are two columns like uh, here you can see we have two attributes a and b and uh, uh, if each value of a uniquely determines a value of b then there is a functional dependency between a and b okay so let's take an example here you can see the two columns drug code and drug name okay so here they mentioned that there is a functional dependency here between drug code and drug name that means if you take a value of drug code it is related with exactly one value of drug name so if you take the first drug code to 2378 it is related with only one value tramadol here you cannot see two values related with the to 2378 okay like that uh, if you take the next drug code it is related with uh, one drug name it is not related with more than one drug name so if you see uh, 017663 it is related only with omeprazole it's not related with any other drugs here so this is true for the second row and if you look the third row here you can see it is related with only one drug it is simvastatin so it is uh, repeated here but it's related with only one name that is simvastatin okay so if you took this drug code it's related with only one value and if you check a 1 2 4 5 it is only related with amitriptyline c 3 1 3 1 9 is also related with the ciprofloxacin and t o 5 2 2 3 it is related with the tamsulosin so if a value of drug code it is related with exactly one value of drug name then we can uh, say, say that if the, if there is a functional dependency okay so how you will read the functional dependency drug name is dependent on drug code or you can read like this drug code determines drug name okay both are correct either you can uh, say drug code determines drug name 
or you can say drug name is dependent on drug code okay so this is functional dependency uh, what is second normal form is that if there is a partial dependency between non primary key and primary key then it is not in second normal form okay so we are checking whether there is a partial dependency between any non primary key and the primary key so look at this table here the primary key is the combination of patient id date and drug code here uh, these three columns are underlined which means that this is the primary key so actually it is the combination of three columns patient id date and drug code and what are the non primary keys the non primary key is drug name dosage and duration so if any non primary key column is dependent on a part of the primary key this is called partial dependency any non primary key column depend on a part of the primary key for example a non primary key column is drug name so if drug name is depending on any part of the primary key if drug name is depending on patient id or drug name is depending on date uh, if drug name is depending on drug code which means that there is a partial dependency between non primary key and primary key uh, actually it is a, not primary key it will be a part of the primary key that's why we are saying that it is a partial dependency okay so here we already uh, already uh, mentioned that there is a dependency between drug code and drug name so drug name is a non primary key column and drug code it is a part of the primary key column so if there is a dependency like this then it is not in second normal form okay also you can check whether dosage is depending on any part of the primary key also you can check duration is depending on any part of the primary key okay so is it in second normal form it's not in second normal form because here there is a partial dependency between uh between the non primary key and the primary key okay so this is how we can uh, check whether the table is in second normal form or not also you need to not one more thing if the primary key is only one column then uh, no need to check uh, we can uh, we can say that the table is in second normal form okay so here we have the, uh, the combination of three columns so you have to check any non primary key is depending on the primary key but if the primary key have only one column then no need to check for this step uh, we can say that it is in second normal form i hope it's clear okay so now uh, we will see the example Uh, second normal form i already explained uh, sara if, if uh, there is a partial dependency between primary key and non primary key then uh, this is not in second normal form that means if any non primary key uh, is depending on a part of the primary key then it is not in second normal form okay uh, let's see the example so you can understand okay uh, so here here you can see the primary key it is the combination of two columns so you have to check whether uh, any non primary key is depending on a part of the primary key okay okay so look here uh, the the primary key is patient id and doctor id and date what we need to check um yeah here in the question they mentioned that the primary key is uh, the primary key is the patient id doctor id and date so what we need to check whether patient name is depending on any part of the primary key like patient name is depending on patient id patient name is depending on doctor id and patient name is depending on date like that we need to check whether doctor name is depending on a part of the primary key like doctor name depending on patient id doctor name depending on doctor id and date like that you can check for any non primary key column here okay here in the question they already mentioned that patient id determines patient name okay so i will write the dependency here 
so you can understand better okay so, so this is one of the, the functional dependency in the table and also here uh, they mentioned that doctor id determines doctor name so this is the next uh, dependency in the table doctor id determines doctor name and one more dependency hospital id determines hospital name So the primary key is it is patient ID, uh, doctor ID and date. And uh, here you can see this uh, patient name, doctor name and hospital name. That means what we written in the right hand side of the dependency. So what are the right hand side for the three dependencies here? Patient name, doctor name and hospital name. So if uh, any non primary key depends on a part of the primary key. So patient ID, it is a part of the primary key doctor id it is a part of the primary key so here you can see there is partial dependency because patient id it is a part of the primary key patient name it is non primary key so if it depends on a part of the primary key it's not in it is not in second normal form similarly here you can see doctor name it is not depending on a part of the primary key so this is not in second normal form so what we uh, uh, what we are going to conclude the table is not in second normal form okay so here one of the question is normalize the relation to the next higher normal form okay so here uh, look at b what is the highest normal form that the relation conforms to and why so the highest normal form uh, uh, the relation conforms it is the first normal form because there is a primary key yes so you have to write like that the highest normal form the relation conforms to it is the first normal form and here there is one more question why it is in first normal form because uh, there is a primary key it is already underlined here so because of that it is in first normal form then they are asking you to normalize the relation to the next higher normal form show the new relations in the manner the relation appointment is shown above yes uh, if the primary key is not mentioned and if they didn't uh, say anything uh, about a column like the values are unique or uh, something like that then you need to write it is unnormalized uh, sometimes they will give you a table so you can check the columns if the columns are single values and if the values are unique for one column then you can consider that column as the primary key and uh, you can say that uh, you consider that column as the primary key and uh, it is in first normal form. So in a case, if uh, they didn't mention the column values or if they didn't uh, provide the primary key, you have to write it is in unnormalized uh, representation. Clear? <laughs> Yes, you can transform into first normal form. Uh, either uh, you can consider one column if the values are unique. OK, now we need to normalize the table into the next higher normal form. Yeah, yeah, I, I will explain. Can a student have more than one appointment with the same doctor on the same day? So uh, is it possible here? This is the relation appointment. So can we say that? Uh, for any two rows, the values of doctor and uh, values of the patient will be same. Here they, they, they mentioned that it is the uh, primary key. If uh, patient ID and doctor ID and date, here actually uh, it's a mistake here. This is not student, it is a patient. So here they are asking whether you will have uh, same values for patient ID, for doctor ID, and also for the date. So same day means that it is the date 
doctor means that doctor id and uh, here it is not student actually it is patient so the question is uh, no because they are asking whether the patient have more than one appointment with the same doctor on the same day so the patient id and the doctor id and the value of date it should be same for any two uh, patient so this is not possible because it is the primary key if it is the primary key if you take the combination the values should be unique for every row in the relation so the answer is no and justify your answer what will be the answer uh, because it is a primary key the values must be unique uh, the primary key is the combination of patient id doctor id and date so if you take this combination of columns the values must be unique for every row in the table is it clear <coughs> for all of you okay now uh, let's move to c here they are asking you to normalize the relation to the next higher normal form so to convert into next higher normal form we uh, need to check what are the partial dependency these are the partial dependency do you understand what is meant by partial dependency Okay, so we have to uh, remove these partial dependencies from the uh, relation. How you can remove the partial dependencies from the relation? Okay, you have to remove the columns which we written in the right hand side of the uh, first two dependency. Okay. Um, okay, so here I have to remove patient name from the original table. Also, I have to remove the doctor name from the original table. So first we are going to remove the patient name. Okay. Um, so uh, in order to remove patient name, we will remove both. We will remove patient ID and patient name so that we can uh, uniquely determine the patient name by using the patient ID. So here uh, I'm going to uh, create uh, a table called patient or a relation patient and then uh, I have to take out the, the, the left hand side and the right hand side of the first dependency. So the left hand side is uh, patient ID and the right hand side is patient name. You have to write like this. This is the first table and then you need to underline the primary key for this new table. So we can choose patient ID as the primary key because usually um, uh, it will be unique. So just underline by using the, uh, by, uh, the patient ID. You can underline patient ID. just underline patient id okay now uh, now let's uh, create uh, the next table so here <coughs> let's say doctor uh, so write the name of the table as doctor and uh, take out the left hand side and right hand side of the dependency the left hand side doctor id and the right hand side doctor name so write doctor id comma doctor name so this is the second table and here uh, we need to choose the the primary key for the second new table so let's see the uh, the primary key can be doctor id because the values of doctor id will be unique okay so here uh, let's underline doctor id Okay, so this is the second table. Now uh, we need to uh, create the third table. So actually uh, no need to create, it is already there. So this is the original table. The name of the original table is appointments. So write appointments. You, you can take all the columns from appointment except 
patient name and doctor name because we have to remove these two uh, columns then only we can make sure that there are no partial dependency so uh, take all the columns from the uh, original relation except patient name and doctor name okay so what are the columns here patient id for the original table no need to change the name you can take the 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 same name as it is okay so patient name then i'm sorry patient id patient id doctor id no need to include uh, include patient name and doctor name because it it will create the partial dependency hospital id then hospital name hospital name date time so this is the uh, appointment table and uh, here uh, which will be the the primary key in the original table the primary key is the combination of patient id doctor id and date because they are underlined here so we will choose the same as the primary key here so patient id then doctor id and then date so this is the primary key of the third table so this will be the answer normalize the relation to the next higher normal form showing the new relation uh, like this and make sure you identify the primary key for each normalized relation by underlining so if you write these three relation uh, with the uh, the columns and also you have to underline the primary key so uh, you can get uh, the marks for that question so actually make sure uh, just note that the mark for this question is 12 marks okay so uh, this uh, question it's uh, carries 15 marks so you have to know how uh, you can normalize the table into the next higher normal form if it asked in part a patient has more than one appointment uh, with the same doctor but in different days yes you can because um, the values of the date will be different so uh, the answer should be yes okay so is it clear this question is clear for you Okay so we will continue after 5 to 10 minutes okay So the following question for the student registration relation for a training company below uh, so we have the relation registration and uh, attributes are student id tutor id course code group number student name and tutor name and uh, here they they mentioned that the following functional dependencies are hold student id determines the student name tutor id determines tutor name then group number determines student id tutor id course code student name and tutor name uh, and also they mentioned the last functional dependency that is uh, student id tutor id course code determine group number student name and tutor name so uh, how can uh how can we make sure that which will be the primary key can anybody tell me what will be the primary key for this uh, relation in this case here they didn't underline any attribute so we cannot know which will be the primary key and uh, also they didn't give the table so you we cannot check the column values so in that case uh, here they they said that uh, look at the last two uh, functional dependencies which uh, they are given so here you can see group number it determines all the other columns in the table so here if you look at group number group number as per the third functional dependency group number determines the first column student id then it determines the tutor id the next column then the course code the third column and uh, group number it is the same so no need to check for that then student name and tutor name so if uh, one column determines 
all mm -hmm. other columns in the table or if uh, one column determines all other attributes then we can make sure that that will be the that will be one of the key in the relation so here in this example group number can be a key and uh, we have one more key here that is the combination of student id tutor id and course code because by these three columns you can determine the other columns in the table so if you took out student id tutor id course code from the table the other columns are group number student name and tutor name so we can also consider this as a key the combination of student id tutor id and course code so here we have two keys and you can choose one that will be the primary key so if you are choosing group number as the primary key then we can say that it will be in first normal form because uh, uh, there is a primary key so of course the values will be unique and uh, here the primary key have only one column so we can make sure that uh, it will it will also be in second normal form is it clear <coughs> Okay, in this case, uh, they didn't mention uh, what is the primary key. So we need to find out the primary key. How you will find out the primary key if they didn't give the column values or if they didn't uh, uh, mention that this is the primary key. So what you need, you need to check if there is a column, uh, if it determines all the other columns in the table here. They already mentioned that uh, there are four dependencies which are existing in the table. The first dependency student ID determines student name. That means there is a functional dependency between student ID and student name. Then they mention that tutor ID determines tutor name. That means there is a functional dependency between tutor ID and tutor name. Then the third one group number determines all the other columns in the table. That means there is a functional dependency between all the other columns and the group number. So if you have a column like that, that means by one column, if you can determine or if you can find out all the other columns in the table, then uh, group number can be the key of the relation or it can be the key of that table. OK, so if you check out group number from the registration relation, then by group number, you can determine all the other columns in the relation. Uh, you can determine student ID, you can determine tutor ID, course code, student name and tutor name. So if you have a, a case like that, then we can consider group number as the primary primary key or it can be a key. So in this case, we have multiple keys in that relation. What is the other key? Here uh, they already mentioned that the last functional dependency is student ID, tutor ID, course code determine group number, student name and tutor name. That means the combination of the student ID, tutor ID, course code will determine group number and student name and tutor name. So uh, by the combination of student ID, tutor ID, course code, you can determine all the other columns in the relation. So we can say that there is a functional dependency between the left hand side and the right hand side. So in this case, we can consider the combination of student ID, tutor ID, course code as a key so you can choose one and that will be the primary key so in this example you can choose either group number as the primary key or the combination of student id tutor id course code as the primary key is it clear now uh, but i know there are no four primary key here we have only two primary key one is group number and the second one is the combination of student ID, tutor ID and the course code. Is it clear now? Okay, for all of you. Uh, Isra, uh, if they didn't uh, give the primary key for a relation, uh, then you need to find out the primary key. So by one column, if you can determine all the other columns in the table, then uh, you can consider that column as the primary key. 
in this example by group number you can determine all the other columns in the relation so we will consider group number as the primary key uh, it is mentioned in the question they they said that group number here look the third line here group number determines student id tutor id course code student name and tutor name that means by the column group number you can determine all the other columns in the table so in that case we can choose group number as the key here we have one more key but the the simple one we will choose as the primary key clear isra okay now uh, let's see the next question so choose uh, this is the first question choose a suitable primary key for the relation so we will choose group number as the primary key then what is the highest normal form that this relation conforms to and why so if you are choosing group number as the primary key the highest normal form it conforms it is uh, second normal form because uh, because there is a primary key we can uh, say that it is in first normal form and uh, the primary key have only one column so we can say that it is also in second normal form is it clear okay then uh, the, the third question normalize the relation to 3nf showing the new relations in the manner the relation appointment is uh, shown above uh, actually here not appointments registration because the name of the relation here it is registration by mistake they wrote appointments here make sure you identify the primary key for each normalized relation by underlining it so now we mentioned that it is in second normal form and we need to convert uh, the second normal form into um, sorry we need to convert the registration relation into uh, to third normal form and you have to underline the primary key okay uh, so for that one second Okay. <coughs> so in order to convert it into third normal form, we need to make sure that there is no transitive dependency between the primary key and non primary key. So before in order to convert the relation into second normal form, what we said, what is the criteria uh, for a relation to be in second normal form? The first criteria, it must be in first normal form. And the second criteria that uh, there should not be any partial dependency between non primary key column and the primary key column. No partial dependency between the primary key column and the non primary key column. So this is about the second normal form. Now we need to understand what is meant by transitive dependency. What is meant by transitive dependency? So here you can see if there are three attributes or three columns, uh, the first dependency, let's say A determines B and the second dependency B determines C. So in the table or in the relation, if you have two dependencies like this, a determines B and B determines C, then you can derive a new dependency. What can be the new dependency? The common columns should be removed. So here, uh, for the first dependency, the right hand side is B. And for the second dependency, the left hand side is B. So the commons are B. So you will remove B. Then what you will get, the new dependency that we can create from these two dependency is a determines C. OK, so this is the transitive dependency. That means if you have three columns, A, B and C, and if you have both A and B, A determines B and B determines C, then you can create a new one or you can derive a new one. That is A determines C. OK, is it clear? What is meant by uh, transitive dependency? OK, so uh, what is the definition of uh, third normal form is that there should not be any transitive dependency between 
the primary key and non primary key there should not be uh, there should not be any uh, no no transitive dependency between the primary key and the non primary key okay so can you find out uh, there is uh, a transitive dependency between the primary key and the non primary key in the table <coughs> okay i will write the table here registration and the columns are student id and tutor id scored number student name okay so here we have uh, how many columns 1 2 3 4 5 6 columns are there for the registration relation uh, student id tutor id course code group number student name and tutor name so uh, the primary key it is group number okay so the primary key it is the group number here One second, uh, I wrote here, right? Okay. Okay, so uh, we are we are checking that whether there is a uh, transitive dependency here. So we already mentioned that the primary key is group number. So by group number you can determine student ID. And uh, in the question they already mentioned that student ID determines student name. So here I'm going to write the next dependency student ID. determines student name so look the first two dependency that i wrote here group number determines student id and student id determines student name so from these two you can make the transitive dependency the transitive dependency is group number determines student name so here you can see group number it is the primary key and student name it is the non primary key so actually it is a transitive dependency and it is a transitive dependency between the primary key and the non primary key so because of this we can say that the relation is not in uh, in uh, second uh, sorry third normal form like that uh, here there is one more transitive dependency uh, here by the primary key group number group number determines tutor id because primary key group number uh, it will determine all the other all the other columns in the table so by group number it will determine tutor id and in the question they said tutor id by tutor id it will determine tutor name so i will write that one also tutor id determines tutor name the two dependencies uh, which are existing in the table group number determines tutor id tutor id determines tutor name again you can see uh, the right hand side of the first dependency it is the same as the left hand side of the second one so from these two you can create a new transitive dependency that is group number determines tutor name so again you can see there is a transitive dependency between the primary key and non primary key okay so before i mention that Uh, there is a transitive dependency between group number and uh, student name uh, 
and now one more group number determines tutor name so because of these uh, two dependencies uh, the table is not in uh, third normal form is it clear uh, what we need to remove we need to remove both the student name and the tutor name so that we can make sure that there will not be any transitive dependency yes because uh, if you choose group number as the primary key then uh, it have only one column so no need to check for the second normalization second step uh, you can uh, make sure that it is in second normal form but if you choose the other uh, other uh, key then uh, you have to make sure that it is in second normal form you have to follow the steps of second normal form then uh, uh, you need to check for partial dependencies etc but uh, once you choose the group number group number is the one or column or it have only one column and uh, we can just say that it is in second normal form okay now uh, what we need we have to write uh, the relations so okay i will write it here uh, the registration okay first we will uh, make a new table that is a student and uh, we have to remove student name so along with the student name we have to remove the student id also okay so in the table student we have only two columns student id and student name and you need to underline uh, student id underline student id so this is the first table then we need to represent the second relation that is a tutor so tutor and the columns are tutor id tutor name and here the primary key we can choose tutor id so underline primary key tutor id then you need to write the original table that is registration so registration here you can have all the column except uh, the right hand side of the dependencies okay so the right hand sides are student name and tutor name so remove a student name and tutor name from the original table okay so we have student id then have tutor id okay let me see what are the other columns here we have course code group number two more columns here so student id tutor id the next column is course code okay we'll remove this course code and then group number so in the original table the primary key was group number so you can choose the same as the primary key for this table also just underline group number and close the parenthesis so these are the three relation student tutor and registration and uh, student id is the primary key for the table student tutor id is the primary key of tutor and uh, group number it is the primary key of registration so uh, these are the three relations so according to the question we normalize the relation to 3 nf and uh, we identified the primary key for each relation by underlining the primary key 
So this is the case if you choose uh, group number as the primary key. And you can also do the same thing if you are choosing the next one as the primary key. If you are choosing the combination of student ID, tutor ID and course code. Okay. So please do it by yourself. And uh, if you if you cannot do it, let me know so I can I can explain for you. OK, so uh, can you do it uh, by yourself now? And then I will explain uh, after after uh, five to ten minutes, OK? Yes, uh, if uh, you need you need to 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 mention that you choose group number as the primary key and according to that this is the uh, either stable is in first normal form and second normal form and then you will convert it into uh, third normal form. If you are choosing the other as the primary key then the answer will be different. So no need to write to answer but you have to mention uh, which is the primary key that you selected okay whether group number or uh, the other key uh, for this question you mean uh, the answer of uh, choose a suitable primary key for this relation uh, the the primary key uh, what we cho what we chosen now group number so you can write group number as the primary key uh, ahmed the question one we already explained in the last uh, session and uh, I already recorded it. I will I will share it. OK, so now uh, please. OK, I will share the question now and what you need. Here you have to choose uh, student ID, tutor ID, course code as uh, the primary key and then uh, you need to uh, to make sure that whether the table is in second normal form. If not in second normal form, convert it into second normal form. Do it by yourself and if you cannot do, I will explain. OK, did you solve it? <coughs> what about others? Did you, did you get the answer? OK, I will explain. Uh, look at the question now. Just one second. Uh, here. Student ID, tutor ID, course code, determine group number, student name, and tutor name. Okay. What we are going to do now, we are going to choose another primary key that is the combination of student ID, tutor ID, and course code. Is that clear? I will write it uh, here so I can make it more clear. OK, so what is the primary key? Uh, I will write the primary key. The primary key is the combination of student ID, tutor ID, and course code. This is the primary key and uh, we need to check whether the table is in uh, second normal form. How we can uh, make sure that the table is in second normal form? Uh, we need to check whether there is a partial dependency uh, between the non primary key and the <coughs> primary key. Can you say that whether there is a partial uh, dependency here? Whether there is a partial dependency here? Yeah, what is the partial dependency? Student name and uh, ID and uh, any more partial dependencies are here. Yes, 
Yeah, student name uh, dependent on student ID and tutor name dependent on tutor ID. Okay, I will write it here. Student ID determines student name and tutor ID determines tutor name. Yeah, so these are the two dependencies. We call them as partial dependency. Why? Because student name, it is the non-primary key and it depending on a part of the primary key that is student ID. So it is a partial dependency like that. Here we have tutor name. Uh, it's not it's a non-primary key and it is depending on a part of the primary key tutor ID. So we can say that there are partial dependencies between primary key and non-primary key so that they are not in second normal form. So you have to write why it is not in second normal form. You need to write the relation is not in second normal form and why the relation is not in second normal form. So this will be the answer of the second part. And now we need to convert them into, uh, into second normal form. How we can convert it into second normal form? You have to remove student name uh, from the original table and also you have to remove tutor name from the original table. So we will do the same thing, create a new table student and you can put student name along with the student ID in that new table. So I'm going to add student ID and student name in the new table. And here you have to choose a primary key here. So uh, here the primary key is the student ID. Okay, now you need to create the new table for tutor. So tutor, then we need to remove tutor name along with the tutor ID. So tutor ID, comma, tutor name. And here also you have to choose a primary key. So the primary key is tutor ID. Okay, now you need to write the original table, which is the original table registration. And the columns are student ID, tutor ID, and course code. And uh, what is the primary key that we chosen here? Here you can see the primary key is the combination of student ID, tutor ID and course code. So the primary key for registration, it is the combination of student ID, tutor ID and course code. So this is the normalized relation from here to here. So uh, they are in second normal form. Okay, so if the relation is not in second normal form, you need to convert it into second normal form. I hope it is clear. Yes, it is a composite key because uh, it includes more than one column. What about others? Why others are not responding? Okay, if any of you cannot understand, you can tell me, I can explain for you. Because the, the purpose of the support session to solve the exercises and to solve the problem. And uh, if we spent an extra two hours and if you cannot understand, I think it is useless. So if any of you, if you are unable to understand, please tell me, I can explain. Uh, you mean uh, in this example, the student and tutor relation, you can give any name for the new relation. Uh, I just given student and tutor because the columns are related with the student and for the second table, the columns are related with the tutor. If you don't want, you can give any name, let's say registration one, registration two or R1, R2, no matter uh, uh, if whatever the name of the relation. Uh, you mean uh, whether you are required to write the select statement in the question if they ask you need to write otherwise no need to write the uh, SQL statement.
okay uh, uh, both are correct if you use select distinct it will select only the uh, uh, column values or the unique column values there will not be any duplicate values if you use distinct Both are okay, but in the question, if they mention to get unique column value, you have to use the distinct keyword. Otherwise, no need. Okay, uh, I will uh, I will show you one more example. Uh, Al Hanouf, I will explain with the help of uh, this example, uh, so you can understand uh, easily. Um, okay. So I think this one. Now this one I, I think we already explained. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I will uh, give you one more example. This is. Okay, can you see it clearly? <coughs> okay. Uh, Okay, look here, uh, they given a relation, uh, book and the attributes are ISBN, title, description, author, publisher, book ID, borrower ID, borrower name. So these are the attributes of this relation and uh, they already mentioned uh, what are the functional dependencies that are existing in the table. Here you can see ISBN will determine title, description, author, publisher, book ID, borrower ID, borrower name. Then the second functional dependency, book ID determines ISBN. And uh, the third one, borrower ID determines borrower name. So these are the three functional dependencies which are existing in the table. So the first question is, uh, which is the primary key? Uh, they didn't mention or they didn't underline. So, uh, and even they didn't uh, given the table. So we need to find out which will be the uh, uh, the the primary key. So Ahmed and Bara, they said ISBN. Is it ISBN? All of you. Yeah, here you can see uh, if I uh, take uh, out ISBN by ISBN here in the first functional dependency, uh, they mentioned that uh, we can find out the title, the description, the author, the publisher, book ID, borrower ID, and also the borrower name. That means by one column ISBN, we can find out all the other columns in the relation. If yes, if so, we can we can say that ISBN is the primary key of the table. Okay, so here the primary key will be ISBN. Now, is it in first normal form? Is it in first normal form? Yeah, they said that it is in uh, first normal form. It is in second normal form. Some they said it's in third normal form. No, it's in second normal form. And Sally, why it's not in first normal form? Okay, what I said before, if you have a primary key for a relation, we can say that it is in first normal form. al uh, this is the criteria uh, for the first normal form. If you have a primary key, then we can just say that it is in first normal form because the criteria for a relation to be in first normal form is 
the values must be single values for each and every column in the relation. So if there is a primary key, we can make sure that the values will be unique values and it will be uh, single values. So we can say that because we chose uh, ISBN as the primary key, we can say that it is in first normal form. Is it in second normal form? Yes, it is in second normal form because we have only one column as the primary key. So if there is only one column as the primary key, again we can make sure that uh, Uh, Ahmed, uh, yes, primary key is not given, but we selected one primary key based on the given functional dependency. So based on FB1, we found that by ISBN, you can determine all the other columns in the table. So we choose uh, ISBN as the primary key. So in this case, we can say that the relation is in first normal form. No, if we choose a primary key, uh, if the yes if we choose primary key and if it contains only one column then we can say that it is in second normal form but if the primary key that we selected if it contains more than one column then you have to check whether there is a partial dependencies in the table or not uh, sarah why it is in first normal form because we found out a key and we consider that key as the primary key once you found out a primary key then we can say that it is in first normal form okay <laughs> and it is also in second normal form because the primary key that we selected it have only one column uh, it have only one column ISBN, so we can uh, make sure that it is also in second normal form. Is it clear? Uh, no, Ahmed, if you mentioned that if you are uh, choosing ISBN as the primary key, then you can say that it will be in first normal form. If there is no primary key, then only we can say that. But in this case, here we can, the, the, yeah, after choosing, yes. <laughs> but when you write the answer for the exam, first they are asking to write the primary key. Okay, so that means you selected a primary key. So once after your selection of the primary key, you can say that it is in first normal form. Clear? Okay, now uh, we are going to make sure that uh, is it in uh, third normal form because we mentioned that it is in second normal form. Uh, so if it is in second normal form, whether it is in third normal form or not, whether there is a transitive dependency or not. So uh, how you can uh, uh, check whether the table is in third normal form if there is a transitive dependency. So just uh, check whether there is a transitive dependency or not. Yeah, Ahmed said it's not in it's not in third normal form. Three NF. Don't write ah here there is an FB three borrower ID determines borrower name. Yeah. Uh, what is the transitive dependency? Can you tell me what is the transitive dependency which is existing here? The transitive dependency non-PK determines non-PK. ISBN determines borrower ID, yes. Because ISBN is the primary key, uh, by ISBN, you can determine borrower ID and ISBN determines borrower name as in, is it that dependency that we are checking now? Yeah, the second dependency that is borrower ID determines borrower name, yes. Then from these two dependencies, you can create the transitive dependency. Okay, I will write. Okay. 
The first dependency is ISBN determines bore over ID, bore over ID, then bore over ID determines bore over name. So these are the two dependencies which are existing in the table because ISBN is the primary key. By primary key, you can determine all the other columns in the table. So ISBN determines bore over ID. And this one, it is already given in the question. The second, the third functional dependency is bore over ID determines bore over name. So from these two dependencies, we can create the new transitive dependency that is ISBN determines ISBN determines bore over name. So you all know that uh, ISBN is the primary key and bore over name, it is the non-primary key. So if there is a transitive dependency between primary key and non-primary key, then the table is not in third normal form. Ahmed, what, he, what you said before, non-primary key determines non-primary key. No, the here, the left-hand side, it is not non-primary key, it is primary key. So if there is a dependency between uh, primary key and non-primary key, then it is it is not in third normal form. So, uh, Alhanouf, what is meant by third normal form? You have to check whether there is a transitive dependency between uh, primary key and non-primary key. If there is a transitive dependency between them, it is not in third normal form. Is it clear? Okay. And uh, here we need to convert it into uh, into next normal form. So for that, okay. So this is our table, and uh, what we need we need to uh, to take out both ISBN and borrower name from the original table. So. Let me write the new table name as book one and here the columns will be ISBN and pour over name. That means here this is the dependency is uh, making the violation of uh, violation of uh, 3NF or third normal form. So we are going to remove both left hand side and right hand side from that table. Uh, Sarah, if there is no transitive dependency between primary key and non-primary key, then the table is in third normal form. Okay, so ISBN and bore over name, and here we can choose ISBN as uh, the primary key. Then the next table will be book two. Sorry, the original name. You can give the original name and you can uh, choose all the column except the borrower name. So here I'm going to choose all the column except the borrower name. And here uh, the primary key is ISBN because in the original table the primary key is uh, ISBN. In, uh, and uh, is there any other uh, transitive dependency here? Is there any other transitive dependency here? No. So we can say that both the tables that we just uh, created here, book one and book, both of them are in third normal form. Is, is it clear?